Hello, and welcome to this video, which will present information about the rubrics mentor teachers use to evaluate student teachers in the UW College of Education. Mentor teachers in our programs are required to complete two rubrics, a midterm evaluation and a final evaluation. We will be looking at samples of the rubrics, which differ by program. We will also be exploring the outcomes on those rubrics, the four levels of performance, and some distinct considerations for expectations both at the midterm point of the semester and at the final point. In addition, I'll provide some look-fors on common rubric outcomes. One thing to recognize about the student teaching evaluation rubrics is that they do differ by program. So if your student teacher is in the elementary education program, you will be evaluating him or her using a specific rubric that is tied to elementary education program standards. If your student teacher is in one of the secondary education programs, there are different rubrics for each content area. Again, each rubric is tied to specific program standards. For example, the secondary mathematics education student teaching rubric is aligned to standards put forward by the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Each program has standards and the rubrics are aligned to those standards. Each mentor teacher should have received a handbook which contains paper versions of the rubrics as well as due dates for both the midterm and final rubrics to be completed during the student teaching semester. I will be showing you some samples of the paper versions of the rubrics in this video. When it comes time to submit both the midterm and the final rubric, you will be using Live Text, which is an online system. This course contains more information about Live Text, and this video itself will give you contact information you can use if you run into problems with submitting your evaluation through Live Text. This image shows a small portion of the paper version of the elementary education program rubric. The version of the rubric in live text contains the same information, but in an online format. The arrow at the top is pointing to the broad outcome, which is consistently applies important aspects of teaching developed during previous professional education courses. The second arrow is pointing to the standards showing the alignment. The third and fourth arrows are pointing to two subtopics of this general outcome. The two you can see here are professional behavior and ethical conduct, as well as effective work with diverse learners. Of course, there are many other outcomes that will be evaluated. In this sample, we are just showing a couple of topics to get you started. Walking across the rubric, you can see that there are four levels of performance unsatisfactory, basic, proficient, and distinguished. Each level of performance has a descriptor which provides some markers of performance at this level and for this topic. For example, if we look at the basic rating on professional behavior and ethical conduct, we can see that this rating would apply if the student teacher has incomplete knowledge of school policies, does not seek information pertaining to school policies, displays appropriate behavior, attends as minimally required, and spends no time outside of school hours. If I'm looking at this as a midterm evaluation, and I see that my student teacher shows up on time and regularly, but doesn't seem to push him or herself to get a clearer understanding of how the school works, and only is in the school during school hours, I would definitely see this person as a rating of basic. It will also be helpful to have your student teacher evaluate his or her own work using this same rubric. If you do this collaborative evaluation at the midterm, the two of you can sit down together to see where the areas of strength and weakness are and plan out what you might focus on for the remainder of the semester. As I mentioned before, there are several different rubrics for secondary education programs depending on the content area. Again, these are aligned to meet specific program area standards. This sample is from the Secondary Mathematics Education Program, and this portion of the rubric focuses on the critical ability to provide a positive and effective classroom environment. Note the same four levels of performance, unsatisfactory, basic, proficient, and distinguished. By the end of the student teaching semester, we are looking for the student teacher to be proficient on all aspects of the rubric. 
If you look at the descriptors here, you can see that the unsatisfactory descriptors are truly problematic with lack of attention to the classroom environment, poor planning and instruction, and inappropriate responses to student behavior as well as the use of sarcasm. On the basic level of performance, we're seeing a bit of improvement, but this is characterized by inconsistencies and lack of independence on the part of the student teacher. Proficient is the goal here. So here we've got consistent control of the environment of planning and teaching practices and in responses to student behaviors. On the distinguished level, you can see that the student teacher is not only doing everything at the proficient level, but is also taking lots of initiative, actively promoting self-discipline among students, building motivation, and monitoring plans and expectations. The key to remember is that it is possible at the midterm point that we would see basic ratings for student teachers, not only in this particular area, but in others as well. The goal at the final evaluation will be proficient. If at some point a student teacher is evaluated as unsatisfactory using these markers in the performance levels, it is very likely that an improvement plan is needed. To set up an improvement plan, the mentor teacher should contact the facilitator and the UW supervisor. We also wanted to highlight some considerations specifically for the midterm evaluation. First, we ask that mentor teachers use the rubric descriptors to evaluate students as they are at midterm. So if the descriptors under BASIC fit the characteristics or performance of your student teacher, go ahead and rate them as BASIC at the midterm. It's really not appropriate to assign a higher performance level, particularly at midterm, on the basis that the student teacher is relatively new. We've designed these descriptors so that they can be accurately used at any point during the student teaching semester. If a student teacher is performing at an unsatisfactory or basic level at the midterm, but the mentor assigns the student teacher proficient, thinking, well, it's only halfway through the semester, so they're doing pretty well for this point in the semester, this makes it more difficult later on if a student teacher is struggling to put them on an improvement plan because they've been rated as proficient. We do use the midterm evaluations as an indicator of problem areas that help to determine where a student teacher should be supported. Again, if a student teacher is given an unsatisfactory rating for any outcome at any point in the semester, it is a very good indicator that this student teacher needs additional support and should be put on an improvement plan. To establish an improvement plan, please get in touch with your facilitator and UW supervisor. At the final evaluation, it is important that you understand that the mentor teacher's final evaluation is a part of the overall student teaching grade. The grade for student teaching, which is assigned on a satisfactory or unsatisfactory basis, S or U, is determined by the UW supervisor, looking in large part at the final evaluation. There are likely to be other assignments as well that the student teacher must do including the EdTPA, which is a performance assessment student teachers must complete. Please do remember that for most of the final evaluation rubrics, students can have no ratings of unsatisfactory and no more than three ratings of basic in order to successfully complete student teaching. For this reason, it is very important to keep the UW supervisor and your local facilitator informed of significant problems in the student teacher's performance so that they can be provided with support and an opportunity to improve their performance before the end of the student teaching semester. As mentioned previously, your midterm and final evaluations will be submitted via live text, which is an online assessment data collection tool. We provide more information about live text, including how to access it and how to use it in this module. Of course, if you have problems with live text, you should contact us using our edquest at uwio.edu email address or on the phone at 307-766-2230. If you run into questions or problems with the content of the evaluation, you should contact your facilitator or the UW supervisor assigned to your student teacher. 
It is our hope that this video has been a helpful support to you in completing midterm and final evaluations for your student teacher. As always, please contact us if you have questions, and thank you for everything you do for our students and yours.